We've all heard about the huge shortage of memory in the last few weeks, and the frankly insane price rises that are now present on both DDR4 and DDR5 kits of memory. But how long is this actually going to last? Are PC builders completely screwed? And is the AI boom going to cause mass suffering for gamers in 2026? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about what's happened, why it's happened so quickly, and why there might just be some light at the end of the tunnel. Now, in order to understand how we got here, I first need to explain explain how the memory market actually works. And by memory, I'm referring to the video memory you'll find on a GPU, but primarily the DDR4 and DDR5 memory that you'll be buying for your next PC build. Now, while a quick scroll of Amazon or Newegg might point to loads of different memory brands from the likes of Corsair to Kingston, Team Group, G-Skill, Adata, and more, it's actually not that simple. And they're memory brands and not memory manufacturers. You see, what these businesses do is buy memory ICs from memory makers add them to PCBs to create randoms, validate XMP and Expo profiles, and add their branding and heat spreaders. The manufacturer of the memory ICs, or integrated circuits themselves, is essentially tied up by three players. Micron, SK Hynix and Samsung. What this ultimately means is that the memory brands like Corsair and Kingston can't just turn around when demand goes up and make their production lines run faster. They're reliant upon the three big memory makers to supply them with memory ICs and also heavily dependent when it comes to pricing on what they're paying for that memory from the fabs. And it's the price increases from the fabs combined with unprecedented memory demand that's got us here in the first place. But why has it happened so quickly and what has AI got to do with any of this? Now, it's been no secret that 2025 has been the year of AI and the whole thing has gone crazy this year. You see, every time you write a prompt into ChatGPT, Gemini, or generate a funny video of a cat doing the tightrope with a sombrero, that is actually powered by an AI supercomputer in a big hyperscaler in a data center somewhere. And the resources to generate this kind of stuff can't be understated. OpenAI even came out earlier this year and said that people using please and thank you in their ChatGPT prompts was costing literally tens of millions millions of dollars a year. And as the complexity of these models gets more and more advanced, the need for high-end hardware only gets bigger. But James, these big hyperscalers and data centers, they're not swallowing up loads of DDR5, right? Not exactly. But what they are swallowing up is loads of HBM, otherwise known as high bandwidth memory. Now, HBM is used in high-end AI GPUs like NVIDIA's H200. The card Trump recently lifted a ban on sales of to China. This HBM memory, which is in such insatiable demand, is manufactured by three main players. And you guessed it, they're Micron, SK Hynix, and Samsung. And this is where the big problem lies. You see, HBM memory is manufactured using the same wafers or raw materials as DDR4 and DDR5. And if you take a current look at the price per gigabyte of HBM compared to DDR5, the results are staggering. Currently, even with the super inflated memory prices, the average cost per gigabyte of DDR5 is between three and five dollars. The average cost of HBM between 30 and 45 USD. Now, even with a lower yield, more complex manufacturing process, and a higher cost of raw materials, you can see why these fabs are prioritizing the production of HBM rather than DDR5 memory. Now, recent news of Micron exiting the crucial commercial business only adds complication to this, and we've got to talk about it. Now, for those of you that don't know, the memory brand Crucial that makes DDR4, DDR5, and SSDs has announced they're shutting down. And Crucial's been one of the biggest players in the space for over 30 years. Now, this sounds like bad news, right? And let me be clear, it's not exactly good. But what this isn't, it isn't Micron saying we're not making DDR5 anymore. It's Micron saying we're not going to sell it under our own brand umbrella. That's because they've recognized that the capacity in the fabs, which they can control because it's their own products they're manufacturing, is much more profitable for them elsewhere. They'll still continue to supply memory ICs to the likes of Kingston and Corsair, but presumably at a much higher cost per gigabyte than what we've seen before. That is one of the main factors as to why memory memory has got so damn expensive. But much like the GPU shortages of 2020, 2021, and 2022, which I remember very vividly, when things start to become in low supply, people panic and go out and buy much more than they need. Now, we're all kind of guilty of this. I own a PC building company here in the UK called Geeka PC. And when the memory shortages hit, we tried our best to get the memory in that we needed to continue manufacturing systems. Ultimately, we paid a lot more for that memory than what we would have six or seven weeks ago. But this influx of demand from 
from everybody has created this exacerbated undersupply of memory compared to the high levels of demand. But there are other factors which have affected this shortage too. Lots of these memory fabs are based in East Asia, countries like Taiwan, South Korea and Japan. And the tariffs that hit in the US earlier in the year didn't help when it comes to memory supply and demand. When tariffs were at their all time high, memory manufacturers didn't want to get stuck with a load of stock that they couldn't shift that they paid large tariffs on. Now to be clear, I don't want to make this video political in any way. And you could argue that the tariffs have actually had a positive impact in many respects in the long run, as actually what we've seen is a huge investment in fabs which are now being built in America. But what we can be clear about is that this uncertainty surely didn't help when it came to stock levels in the retail channel, particularly as I say in the US. Now the good news is that there are a number of new fabs set to come online. And this is the point of the video where we hopefully start to get a little bit more positive. Fundamentally, we can dive through all the intricacies of how the memory market works. But what we're faced with here is a fundamental lack of supply compared to the demand that's currently out there. And the way that this situation solves itself is either by the demand decreasing, the supply increasing, or both. Now, the onboarding of new fabs is going to massively help with this. These new fabs might only be for AI chips like HBM memory, but what they will do is release pressure on fabs that were previously producing much more DDR5 that now no longer need to produce quite as much HBM memory. But these fabs aren't going to come online overnight. Many are expected to land in 2027, and for you and me who just want to build a PC, is this just more bad news for the component industry over the next year? Now, the other solution is that the current AI surge of demand calms down. We're seeing these hyperscalers and data centers build at great pace. And you have to wonder whether this demand for high-end AI GPUs with their HBM memory can last forever. We're also seeing these big AI companies be funded to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars. Is this sustainable? Can it last forever? And will the AI models actually get more efficient and the hardware requirement for these models drop? That is what we need to wait and see. Ultimately, this insatiable demand for memory just can't last forever. And while I don't think memory prices will ever go back down to that 80 or $90 marker for a kit of 32 gigabytes, we have seen the price rises start to slow down and stabilize. And here in the UK, where we've been monitoring things really closely, we have actually seen memory prices slip a little bit from their all-time high last week and the week before. The question then is, should you buy memory now? Should you wait? If you're watching this video wanting to build a PC, what on earth should you actually do? Now, the way I see it, there are a few solutions. If you're looking to build a new PC and you already have a system with some compatible memory, even if the speed it's not great, the latency is a bit high and the capacity is not quite enough, I'd keep hold of it for now. The used market is another option that we obviously explored when the GPU shortages came about and that can provide fruitful results. But it can also be mixed and is affected by the same scalping behavior that we saw when the GPU shortages came to be. What I'd love to see personally though is memory brands like Corsair start to offer bundles and bundle in memory with things like cases and coolers so that those of you looking to build brand new PCs have a better chance of getting hold of that memory. Now, ultimately, this insatiable demand for memory can't last forever, and you can guarantee that manufacturers will be spending a huge amount of money trying to scale up production of all of their memory, because obviously the more memory they make, the more money that they can generate. But this memory shortage isn't going to end tomorrow, and 2025 might be the year where buying a pre-built is actually cheaper than building yourself. Keep an eye on prices, because as I say, I would expect them to soften a little bit as we head into the new year. And while the ludicrous pricing on memory right now is awful, for those of you looking to build a PC, it will hopefully help to soften demand and reduce the gulf between the lack of supply and the number of people who need to buy DDR5 kits for their next systems. Ultimately, what we have to hope is that it won't have a detrimental impact on things like GPUs and the SSD prices, which have gone up a little bit in the last couple of weeks, don't follow in the same footsteps. My concern really is how brands that sell cases, coolers and power supplies are actually going to sell anyone any components in 2026 and how GPU makers, who admittedly are lining their pockets with the world of AI are going to sell cards to people who can't buy memory to put them in systems with. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. I want to say I hope you enjoyed this video, but you probably didn't because it wasn't one of my most positive. But hopefully it's helped and given you a bit of insight as to where we are, how we got here, and why there hopefully could be some light at the end of the tunnel.